Now let us try to see what are the different ways of accessing open source large language models. In the later on exercises in this course, we will be using large language models extensively. You must have access to one of the large language model. If you cannot afford open AI, which is a paid version, you can access some of the good open source large language models and there are multiple ways of accessing them. We will try to explore them. But before that, first things first, how do you access all this material? How do you get all the code files? You go to my channel in that, go to the playlist that you are watching and then go to, let's say you are in Gen AI. Right now you are inside this Gen AI playlist and you can see all the videos. Now, if you click on any of the video, for example, if you are watching this video, Hugging Face Models, now, if you go to its description, in the description, you will be having uh, these uh, code files. There's a code file here, and this is the course material. You can directly click on the code file. That will take you to the code. You can directly access it, this code. You can practice it here, or you can click on uh, course materials. That will take you to the GitHub page. From the GitHub page, whichever course that you are taking, suppose that you are in Generative AI, these are the videos. This is the materials download link. These are the assignment questions. You click on any of them and then it will take you to that location. Suppose that you're watching machine learning videos, you have to access it from here or Python from here. So you have to access it from the description that is given to you under this video. Even the video that I'm showing it to you right now, under this video, there'll be some description which you will be accessing from there. Now let's get back to our open source LLM models accessing. Now, if you are working on LangChain or if you're working on any of the generative AI models, definitely, you require access to one or the other large language model access for sure. Now there are multiple ways of accessing it. I will tell you the first or the best method. As of now, in my experience, I have seen OpenAI is giving the some of the best results that we have. There are other methods as well, but OpenAI is the one that is uh, quite good, but it is paid. You will not be uh, accessing it without the API token. First, I'll show it to you through OpenAI. Then I'll tell you what is the advantage of it what are the ways of accessing it then we will go to the open versions open ai is a paid the remaining ones are the open source ones we can use those uh, large language models instead of open ai even in this course later point of time if you want to use at any point of time in the exercises if you want to use a large language model you can use any of the large language models that we are going to discuss in this particular session now as usual we have to install uh, langchain so i would say pip install Langchain and then uh, pip install OpenAI and then there is a pip install uh, Langchain community. These three we have to install quietly. Now I'll show you, let me show you the OpenAI version. As I told you, OpenAI is not free. You have to go to OpenAI platform. So OpenAI platform. If you go here, you will have an option to get the API key. Obviously you have to log in. So let's log in. Now here, if we go to API reference playground, there are uh, multiple other options are there. We will go to our usage somewhere. There is a, like there are too many options here. We will go to our dashboard usage. So API keys, these are the API keys. You can create a new key, secret key. You can create it. I think only once it will be visible to you, you have to save it somewhere and then you have to reuse it again and again. You can create a new secret key and you can uh, give a different type of accesses. Now, the reason why I'm saying even though it is paid, you should use it is the cost is uh, quite less. So you will not be incurring a huge cost even if you're doing on extensive data sets unless until you are creating an application and sharing with the rest of the world, then it may you may incur higher cost. But for learning purpose, it is not going to cost you a lot. So if you are having OpenAI, what is the way that you use it? You say import OS. You have to get the OpenAI API key. For that, we would say import OS and then OS.environment key, OpenAI API key. This has to be exactly like this and you have to put your key here. That is one way. Otherwise, you can store your OpenAI API key in the Google secrets with the same name. And then if you execute this piece of code automatically, it will be accessing the OpenAI API key from there. The reason why I'm suggesting OpenAI is you will be able to get the best of the best results if you are using OpenAI compared to any of the other tools. OpenAI right now is giving the most accurate results. I have seen that a lot of uh, developers, a lot of data scientists saying the same thing as of now. But these large language models are improving uh, day by day. Maybe later on, there might be some other large language model that will be performing better than OpenAI. 
So from Langchain, LLMs import OpenAI, and then we give temperature. Temperature is controlling the randomness of the output, how random the output is. Temperature varies between zero to one. If the temperature is near to zero, there will be no randomness. If temperature is near to one, maximum randomness or the maximum creativity. So this is kind of creativity control. And then the maximum number of tokens, how many tokens we want to use. Even if you ignore this uh, parameter, that is still fine. So I asked uh, OpenAI to write a four line poem on uh, AI. This is a poem that has been given. Let's say if you say temperature zero, OpenAI, temperature is zero. What is overfitting? Like when I'm asking factual questions, I don't want it to be very creative. So I want it to just return whatever it has seen. What is overfitting in machine learning? Explain it to a layman. Maybe we can give temperature slightly higher because we wanted to explain it to a layman. So I'm giving temperature is 0.3. Then we are overfitting is when uh, model is too closely tailored to the training data, high accuracy on training data, and then uh, significantly lower accuracy on the test data. The reason why I suggest you to use OpenAI is if you go to my usage, I use the uh, very extensively. If you go to my usage, if you see my July bill, it was $2 only. If you go to my June bill, it was uh, $1. In May, I have run a workshop. In that workshop, I have uh, shared my key with most of the participants, nearly 70 participants. I have shared my key. All of them have used. So these are the two workshops that I have run. Even with 70 participants, the bill that I got is just $9. So the costing, like from the costing point of view, OpenAI is uh, quite quite uh, what I would say reasonable pricing, especially when you are learning. So right now the costing goes like this around uh, 0 0.5 dollars for 1 million tokens. So you can get an idea. Let us suppose if you are paying $10, so you get around 15 million input output tokens. So this is like a token, like when we go back to our code file, like sometimes each word is token. Sometimes one word is divided into two tokens. Let us suppose world will be one token. Data will be one token. Sometimes, uh, let's say, probabilities will be one token. Like sometimes, end will be one token, less will be another token. Rain will be a token, raining will be two tokens. Like that, like input and output tokens put together. Probably in this one, I can guess that around 80 or 90 tokens are used, including the input as well as output, max to max 80 tokens. But I'm saying, if you are asking questions that are consuming too many tokens, let's say in one question, you're asking, you're consuming almost 1,000 tokens. You can imagine, for the sake of our understanding, for the ease of understanding, you can imagine one token as one word. So whatever query that you're writing, it is consuming 1000 words at a time. Even then you can use it for 15,000 times. So what I can tell you roughly, you can complete my whole course of generative AI within $10. You can complete my whole course of 10 uh, generative AI, not only my course, maybe you can complete 10 other courses as well. If you recharge for $10, you can use it almost for one year from the learning point of view, not really from the application building point of view. So if you are serious about generative AI, if you want to learn it seriously, I suggest you to buy this $10 hardly one movie ticket it'll cost. You just buy it, take one token for, take one API key for $10 and you can use it for one year. So go for it. If you're a student, if you're not able to afford even that $10, then we will check the rest of the open AI or open source models, which are not paid, which are kind of free. Sometimes our client, they themselves are not comfortable in using OpenAI. Maybe they feel that this API is uh, kind of uh, taking away some of the information, confidential information. We want to get one of the model to our local and then use it. In those cases, definitely we cannot use it. But I'm talking only from the learning point of view. If you are planning to learn generative AI, maybe I seriously suggest you to go for OpenAI version of uh, your uh, large language model to begin with. And then what are the other options? So OpenAI is paid one. Maybe you can ignore it because the whole uh, point of this video is talking about open source ones. Let's get to the actual point of the video, open source ones. So one of the open source, only from the learning point of view, I'm talking right now. From the learning point of view, you can use, if you ask me what is the next best option, let's say in our course, there are so many exercises. To run those exercises, what is the next best LLM that I would suggest? Cohere is offering, for per personal learning purpose, Cohere is offering one API key, you can use a trail key. You cannot use it in production, but for learning purpose, you can get something called a trail key. So if you go to Cohere uh, dashboard in there, you will get one uh, trail key. So I'm going to give you this link as well in this uh, code file. In the video below, if you click on the code file, you will get this uh, particular location. You try to log in with either GitHub or uh, Gmail and then say continue. 
After that, you can add a new trail key. You can create a new trail key. You can give a name and you can get the key there from here. So dashboard.cohere.com. This is the place where you will get the, this is a production key, which is paid. So Cohere is not hundred percent free. It is only going to give you trail keys for your learning purpose. So if you ask me, what is the next best LLM? If I want to learn uh, generative AI, and if I want to do all the assignments, all the exercises, if I do not have open AI API key, what is the next best option for learning purpose? The next best option is Cohere. So as usual, first we have to install Cohere. I would say pip install Cohere quietly and then we have to get the API key. Already I have saved my Cohere API key in the Google Secrets. You have to save it with the same name. So one way to declare or one way to store your key is this way. Your own API key, this is one way. I would say a better way would be using your uh, from Google Colab import user data, os.environment.user data, get user data, Cohere key. Once you do this, Cohere key is set. Since we are uh, changing the model here, the output may slightly change. As, as I told you, you will observe OpenAI is the best LLM as of now in my experience. The rest of the ones also work pretty good, but not as well as the OpenAI. Sometimes if we are working on some of the advanced applications within LangChain, within the space of Gen AI, that is when we will see there's a huge difference in the accuracy between the OpenAI and the other large language models. So from LangChain LLMs, import Cohere, you declare Cohere and then you just say instead of uh, regular uh, LLM instead of OpenAI, you say Cohere here, you give the temperature and you give the similar number of input, similar type of input, you'll get the output. Some deprecation warning, but still the output comes. Along with the poem, is there anything else that I can uh, help you regarding poetry, etc., etc.? There is some other information also that has been uh, given to us. Let us write one more uh, example, LLM equal to Cohere. What is overfitting in machine learning? Explain it to a layman. So the same question we are asking, similar type of answer we should get because overfitting as a concept, whether OpenAI gives us the answer, whether Cohere gives us the answer, it must be same. Overfitting is a common problem that happens when model becomes too complex, learners recognize. So basically, train accuracy is very high, test accuracy is significantly low. That is the problem of overfitting. That is what it is trying to explain. So if you are learning generative AI, if you want to do all the assignments, everything, maybe if you do not have OpenAI key, I would suggest to go with Cohere. Wherever OpenAI is there in that place, instead of declaring my large language model equal to OpenAI, you can declare the large language model as Cohere. And then there are several other open source models that are available and day by day, there is a huge competition. I have seen that last week, uh, Facebook has, by last week, I mean to say in July, 2024, maybe whenever you're watching this video, by then there will be a new model that may come up, which is working much, much better. Llama 2, Llama 3, these are good. Even Mistral model, Mistral model, Falcon. There is a model called Bloom, OPT, XGen, Vicuna. Like that, there are several models. So there are multiple ways of accessing them. Let me show you how to access some of the open source models. Both uh, Cohere and OpenAI are paid, but Cohere is giving you trail key, okay? But what are the actual original open source models? One of them is, let's say, Llama 2. This is open source one developed by Meta. And then Bloom developed by Hugging Face. And then BERT developed by Google. Falcon, I think it was developed by one of the UAE-based company. So let us see how do we access open source models. So if you want to access these open source models, you can go to Hugging Face. Let's say if I want to access Mistral models. So there is something called Mistral AI from Hugging Face. So let's go to Hugging Face. And if you click on Hugging Face models, in the Hugging Face models, you have uh, Mistral AI. Click on Mistral AI. So these are all the models. There are 15 models given by Mistral AI on Hugging Face. Obviously you need Hugging Face uh, login ID and then you have to create your own Hugging Face API key. So there will be API authentication, I think somewhere in the account or somewhere SSH or access tokens, you need your own uh, Hugging Face access token. Once you have that, then you can access the Mistral model from uh, Hugging Face. So Hugging Face we have already seen. So let's go to Hugging face, how do we access? Let's say if I want to access, there is a model called Mistral 7B instruct model. 
So this is the one, let's say version 0 0.1 is there, version 0 0.002 is there, let's say, I want to access this model. So how do we do it? So the process is, first, you have to give again Hugging Face API token, import OS, OS.environment. Some of the models, when you click on them, they say these are gated models. That means when you click on them for the first time, they will ask you to enter some information. Once you enter the information, then they will give you the access to access this particular Hugging Face model. Otherwise, directly you will not be able to access them. Some of them are gated models. If they are gated models, obviously most of the large language models, which are pretty good, are gated models. Make sure that you get the permission. For that permission, you just need to fill in some details and access them. And then once you get that, you enter your own uh, Hugging Face token or you can enter it using this method or using the Google Collab user data method. Now we are going to use it using Hugging Face Hub. Let us access. So the model that I want to access is this one. So this is the model. So let me call that as repo ID. This is the repository ID that I would like to access. Now from, from langchain.llms import Hugging Face Hub. Let me first import and then write the repository ID. I'm going to share this whole code file with uh, better comments and with a uh, uh, better explanation. This is just for our discussion right now. I'm writing it here, the code. A large language model is equal to hugging face hub is a function. You mentioned the repository ID, mention the model quarks, keyboard arguments are temperature. You can mention whatever is the temperature. Maximum length is optional. You can mention it. You can make it larger also. Write a four line poem on AI. So this is the repo ID that we have given. Similarly, let us ask one more question. Let's say again, you don't need to write the repo ID again and again. In fact, the LLM also we have mentioned, but just for the sake of practice, let me write my repo ID. I can change it. Whatever is my repo ID, I'll write it there. And I will say my large language model is this, my temperature is this, and then max length I have increased it slightly. Now I want to know how to pick a stock based on revenue, profit, and profit margin trends. Let me say operating profit margin trends. How do I pick a good stock based on these three factors? Is it possible? To pick a stock based on revenue, profit, and operating profit margin trends, follow these steps, research the industry. I think it look, looks very generic. That's fine. So that is how you will get, like these models are still at the building phase. Maybe in the next one or two years, we are going to get much, much better models. Maybe some of these open source models will be working as good as our open AI model. But as of now, this is one of a uh, good model, Mistral 7B Instruct. Even not only this, the other models here are also pretty good. So that is how you can access it from Hugging Face. In fact, on Hugging Face, you have a recent uh, hit model called Llama. This is also available. Again, this is a gated model. But these models are quite heavy. We will try to give it a shot. We'll try to import it. But usually what I have seen is they tend to throw an error. So let us try to get a Llama model from Hugging Face. Llama from Hugging Face Hub. First of all, you cannot directly get, I, I already have the access to this gated model. That is why I'm accessing it. But once you check this here, you will be asked to enter some information. Once you enter that information, finally, you will get a confirmation saying that, uh, you know what, you have got access to this particular model. You will get an email and then only you can access it. Okay. Now, as usual, I will get this repo ID here and then I will say my repo underscore ID is equal to, this is my repository ID. Is that the one that I would like to get? No, I will try to get one more Meta Llama. Let me click on Meta Llama. I'll try to get a slightly smaller one. 3.18 billion parameters. Yes, this one. Let me get this as the repository ID. This is the model that I want to get. Again, I'm trying to show you multiple ways of accessing open, open source large language models. So I would say my large language model, Hugging Face Hub, you can give the extra parameter max tokens. Otherwise, you can ignore that. So repository ID, so I'll be using Meta Llama model. And then what are some of the ways to boost creativity? That's the question that I have. Now, usually you tend to get an error. So what is error? One of the error will be with the whatever is the key that you have given, you cannot access it. That is one error. The other error right now with Llama models that you will get is it's too large. You cannot download it automatically. You cannot download like 16 GB is the model size. That's too much to download. So it is asking you can use either hugging face spaces. That is one other way. You can use hugging face interface endpoints. That is one more way. Let's say if you have large models like this, which cannot be downloaded, usually hugging face downloads the model and then it starts uh, giving you results. But here it says that 16 GB is too much. So you cannot download the model. Then in that case, what we can do, 
like we can use these two options but i have a better option than these two like you can use it from hugging face somehow you can manage this model but uh, i'll give you a better option there is something called replicate which is similar to hugging face you have something called replicate so you can uh, almost see this as uh, like almost it has all the features like your hugging face you can deploy your own models. You can access the models. It also hosts several models. So Replicate is alternative to Hugging Face. But from Replicate, we can easily get our uh, even large language models. We can access them. Okay. We can use uh, open source models. We can create packages of our own models. And we can choose the models from uh, some of the public models that are shared. Some of them uh, are private models. Some people go and share there. Just like the way Hugging Face models work. Similarly, on Replicate also, you have the model. So if you go to Explore, you have multiple models, SAM to high resolution, like there are image-based models. This is the meta models. So here, again, from Replicate, you have to sign into Replicate. You have to get your own uh, API token. Then only it will work. So I have signed in. I have my API token already available. So we have to install replicate and then maybe if i want this particular model i'll click on this this is a huge one 405 billion instruct this is too much obviously if you are getting it from hugging face it will say that i cannot do it but using replicate we will try to get this so this is the one that has been released just uh, seven or six days back and it is quite huge everybody is exploring this so let us try to work with this it's an open source one we can access it but we are going to do it using replicate Let me add another header here. It's known as replicate. So we are exploring multiple ways of accessing open source large language models. Once you get the replicate key, first of all, you pip install replicate. Pip install replicate. Install. Right. While it is installing, as usual, we will say OS dot environment replicate API token. It has to be like this. I'm filling the replicate API token. I would say from Langchain, you have to code along with me. Just don't observe. First, check how am I writing the code. Pause the video and then try to write the code. Just observe how am I writing and then you write the code. I would say my replicate LLM or I would say my large language model is equal to replicate. This is a function. In that function, mention your model name. So like the way we have got it from Hugging Face, copy the model name. This looks like uh, very much inspired from Hugging Face. And then uh, model quarks are uh, this. You can give max tokens also. Let's ask one uh, question. What are some of the good strategies for studying? That's a question that I have invalid or forgot the comma after this yes we have to get the comma obviously it will take a little bit of time because this is a 405 billion parameters and the model is actually sitting on the replicate server so definitely it is going to take a little bit of time but it does the job for us and obviously meta llama is going to give you a very detailed output if you are not mentioning any max tokens so if you want to study well set specific goals create study schedule that is very important use active learning techniques practice active recall spaced repetition this is a quite a good technique use different senses and then take breaks that is very important every 45 minutes make sure that you take break and then for 45 minutes you study without any disturbance make sure that you switch off or you keep your mobile phone away that is one of the important one they haven't mentioned it here always stay motivated and then space repetition, etc. These are some of the study techniques. So here I'm just trying to show you how do you access the model from Replicate. So you can access it from Hugging Face as well, but uh, directly the way that we have used that is not possible. You have to use it from Hugging Face Spaces or Endpoint, but I would say the better would, would be using Replicate. So you can get the open source model even from Replicate. There are N number of other ways. N number of ways are there. You can uh, just do some research. Maybe some other ways are coming up Maybe right now they are not available later on directly meta they themselves would give us an option to access the model from their servers maybe uh, google may give an option to access from their cloud that is already available we can access it from there also from microsoft also we can access it in fact if you have microsoft cloud free account 
then uh, you can access OpenAI also. Microsoft OpenAI is also possible. The other method, let me show you one more way of accessing this. You can use something called GROQ, Grok. This is uh, not the same as uh, GROK, uh, which is uh, the X uh, Twitter's version. This is Grok, GROQ, Grok. So this is uh, like they have come up with this, like what Grok says is like we are fast AI inference. They have come up with this LPU. You have CPU, you have GPU. They have come up with something called LPU, language processing unit. It's a kind of different type of chip hold together that uh, processes all the language related, large language related queries much, much faster because large language models internally are all these vectors. So these vectors, it'll uh, process much, much faster. So on the Grok cloud, we can try multiple models. So if we go to their uh, website, in that website, we have uh, different, different models that are available on uh, Grok Cloud. So I think uh, we have to go to console and uh, Grok. Console.grok.com. Now here, if I see API keys, my API, here also you have to create an API key. Obviously, whenever you're accessing something from the website, make sure that you are getting the API key. First, get the API key here. This link also I am going to give you. And then uh, in the playground, in the documentation, you have API reference. Now in the documentation, you can also see different, different models they're offering. From here also earlier, we have accessed uh, this one, Meta Llama 3.1 from uh, Replicate, we can also access it from, this is a four, four or five billion uh, parameters model. This is just a preview, Llama 3.170 billion. Try to use this one. We may not uh, require this always. And then uh, you have a Llama models, you have Meta Llama, you have Gemma. This is also a pretty good model. You have Mixtral model. These are all some of the top open source models. If you ask me, can I blindly take any of the top open source models which are giving good results, in my opinion, these are the three. You can go for uh, Llama 2 or Llama 3. You can go for uh, Mixtral or Mistral, any of those uh, Mistral models. Some of them are pretty good. And uh, Gamma 7B is also pretty good. Any of the Gamma based uh, models are also pretty good. You can use any of these three, Llama, Mistral, and then Gamma. So let us try to do an exercise. How do you access it from uh, Grok Cloud? So you have to install Grok Cloud from Langchain, install Grok and then give the API key. My os.environmental key equal to this dot get grok API key. From Langchain grok import chat grok is the option right now they're giving chat grok and then chat grok mention the model name you can mention any of the models that are available right now i generally prefer this uh, 7 billion parameters one this is the model id you can also use model card so this is the one you can use this they are actually connecting back to hugging face just for the overall model related uh, information by model card they mean to say whatever the model is all about the model information and what are the token size what are the number of parameters etc cetera, etc cetera model description. And then I'm saying, what are the top 10 quotes about ignorance? Just I'm asking a question. Let us see, what does it say? We can also give the other parameters like temperature, et cetera, et cetera. So here are the top 10 about the, so basically I have given you a couple of methods for uh, accessing open source large language models. Let me just quickly recap that, then I'll leave you. One of them is using Cohere trail key. But even before that, if you can afford $10, if you feel that is okay, because you will be definitely spending six months or three months to six months in learning generative AI. That is much, much costlier. So if you want to really experience the best of uh, generative AI large language models, I prefer that you go ahead buy open AI. But uh, the other alternatives are you can get a Cohere trail key. That is one option. You can uh, use Hugging Face Hub. That is another option. You can use a Replicate. That is option three. You can use Grok. That is option four. And there are a hell lot of other ways as well. Right now, if you go to Langchain, the large language models that they are offering us are, these are all the large language models they are offering. Some of them are free, some of them are uh, paid, like uh, OpenAI is uh, paid. Cohere is giving a trail key. So you try to identify, is there any large language model that is uh, giving us an interface where we can access this large language model by installing something or by connecting to some of the cloud environment or by connecting it to any of the server.
So as of now, I have given you four methods. These should be sufficient for you to do the rest of the exercises that are coming in this course. Remember to do the exercises before you move on to the next session. Thank you.